Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship at Epworth United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Don, and I'm so glad to be with you this morning. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the first letter of John, chapter 3. And as you prepare your hearts, as we all prepare our hearts to receive God's word for us this morning, I invite you to be in prayer with me. Let's pray together. Loving God, we are so grateful for the gift of your word, the gift of your church, the gift of our minds and hearts and eyes and ears and hands and feet that we can use to learn about you and to respond. Lord, we pray that the word brought to us this morning might fill us with a sense of your presence and holiness and that in leaving worship today, we might carry with us new tools to better serve you. Lord God, may your spirit move in us and among us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our scripture reading this morning uh, comes from the letter, the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version this morning. You are invited to grab um, whatever Bible you have at home. And by the way, if you don't have a Bible at home, we would love to offer you one. We have a bunch of them that we keep around to give as gifts just for this, for this purpose. Um, if you're reading a version different from the New Revised Standard Version, you might find some of the words a little bit different. And I hope that you'll find that interesting in interesting. Um, and intriguing to see how different translators may have um, put the words together a little bit differently. I prefer um, this one, or there's other couple good ones too. All right. First chapter of John, uh, verses 16 through 24. Sorry, the first book, the first letter, good Lord, the first letter of John chapter 3, <laughs> verses 16 to 24. And John writes, We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive it from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of God for all of us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church. My name is Margaret Knox and I am the substitute today for Pastor Don. It is my honor and privilege to share today's message with all of you. Well, it is four weeks since the high of Easter with all the joyous celebrations of the good news that Jesus was risen from the grave. There were credible witnesses to testify to the truth of that. As we look forward to the celebration of Pentecost, are we as enthusiastic about our worship as we were on Easter Sunday? Or have we settled back into our normal Sunday routine? Now we know from the reading from today's message, the writer is describing the one that laid down his life for us. What does that have to say to you today? If you think he was right in seeking to convert new members, you would be wrong. He was writing to people that were already believers. Why? They needed to be reminded of the responsibility to show love to all, to be bold in sharing their faith, to follow the example of the love of God, the Father who sent his son, Jesus Christ, 
into the world to be the savior and redeemer of all. Really, we wonder, why could that be? Hmm, well, how easy is it to become complacent? I know I do. The truth is, my friends, that actions speak louder than words. We often procrastinate at times about doing what we know we should be doing in a timely manner. We are, after all, busy people. Sometimes we make promises to do something for a friend, but get distracted with other things and forget. When that happens, we feel bad and apologize. Think for a moment. What have you done lately to thank and give praise to our Heavenly Father, or Jesus? Have you taken quiet time in prayer, worship, or service? As we remember all that is good in our lives, acknowledge that we have been blessed. As Christians, we are instructed to love one another in all we say and do and act to everyone we see. 1 John 3, 1 starts with the words, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. Dwell on that thought, the children of God. What more could we ask for? What have we done to earn that privilege? It continues, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. We, though, do know him. As Christians, we prepare ourselves at times for many celebrations tied to our faith. In Advent, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We prepare for Easter by observing Lent and particularly Holy Week, which leads us to Easter Sunday. We also celebrate Pentecost, but I'm not sure how much time we spend thinking about the wonder of it. That event changed the apostles forever. The gift of the Holy Spirit, they finally got it. They were transformed and ready to do what Jesus called them, to be disciples for the transformation of the world. How impressive is that? But the, the news for us too is that we are called to be the same. While that may sound a bit daunting, there are many resources to help us be Easter people. We have easy access through the internet to so many translations of the Bible. An abundance of study books are available and Bible study by Zoom for those who are not ready to do group study in person. We can choose to worship in the sanctuary, listen on the radio, take part on Zoom or with Facebook or YouTube. It is certainly much easier for us than the early Christians to stay connected. Their faith was on fire. They trusted and believed in Jesus. The good news for us, my friends, is that we are beloved children of God. Having said that, we have been given our own calling. God created us for his purpose. Given many varied talents to be used, each one of us contribute to the life of our church family and God's work in our own unique way. The Old Testament has plenty to say about God's love that is helpful even today. So many stories from to choose from. The common thread in all of them that God was a loving father to his people. Even when they did not follow his instructions, he provided leaders, priests, and prophets. Though Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, Joshua was the one who led them into the promised land. Later, a time came when they began to worship other gods. Truth told, we can and do at times put our own needs and possessions before we share with others. 
All the commercials tell us we really can't live without this or that. Although they don't always make us happy. The Israelites, now they didn't always pay attention to their prophet's advice, which did not always serve them well. This can happen today even with us. But our life is never right when we're at odds with God. King David gave us the Psalms, which are so beautiful. We know that he, like us, was not perfect, but he did love God and repented his sin against Uriah. God forgave him and believe it and believe that please be, believe that he will do the same for you today. For those who seek his forgiveness. Psalm 51, 1 and 2. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. This tells me that David was aware of God's mercy. That mercy is available to all who ask. Psalm 89, 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness before you. Psalm 101 and 3 tells us, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Sheep were valuable to their own owners in very many ways. We too are valued by God. Listen to Isaiah 9, 6. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Wow. I am amazed at how often there are connections to be found between the Old and New Testaments. Isaiah 40, 28 has a question. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And a much loved, the much loved verse, Isaiah 40, 31. But those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 57, 15 has something to say about how much God cares about his people. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high holy place. And I go with those who are contrite and humble in spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Isaiah 64, yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are the work of your hands. It is important to spend time in reading and discussion with others to enhance our understanding and discernment of the scriptures. Micah 6, 8 is clear. He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Well, what do you think? Humility is often in short supply these days. These ancient words of wisdom still apply to our hectic modern day lifestyle with all the advances in science. Do you still want to feel that same joy and fellowship we shared on Easter Sunday? I think we do. Taking quiet time to spend is good for our soul. Jesus had so many ways to help us live a good life. He lived here on earth without our modern day amenities. He prepared his disciples to share the good news of the new covenant. How willing are you to share your faith in God? Now, if you find it challenging, you're not alone. It means stepping out of our comfort zone. Even scholars, historians, and professors have struggled for words. 
The four Gospel writers each told the story in their own way. Matthew begins with the genealogy of Jesus, his birth, the wise men. For me, the story of the escape of the Holy Family strikes a chord. As one who came here in 1985, I know it takes time and effort to adjust to a new way of life in another country. All we know is that God instructed Joseph to flee to Egypt and then told him again when it was safe for him to return after King Herod died. I think this speaks volumes about obedience to God, not to mention a great trust and faith in God's plan. How easy is it to follow God's plan for us? Well, I'd like to say no problem. But the reality, it is not always easy, is it? God has a way of getting our attention in his time. He holds all the answers to our worries, concerns, issues, and prayers. After all, he knows all about us. We may be able to gloss over things to ourselves and others, but not to God. People wondered if John the Baptist might be the Messiah but he identified himself clearly as the one Isaiah spoke of, the one crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord and to make the path straight. John was aware of Jesus' identity. Jesus, when Jesus was baptized, the word heard from his father, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This shows that father and son are in harmony at the time of the baptism. Then came the temptation in the wilderness, showing the length the devil will go to divert us from God. With Jesus, that was impossible. The death of John the Baptist heralds the beginning of the ministry of Jesus here on earth. He had picked his disciples. Now his choice may seem strange to them, strange to some. After all, they were not what you might expect. They, they were ordinary. But perhaps there's a lesson here for us, that God can use the ordinary to achieve the extraordinary. I wonder if Jesus came today, would he still find disciples to follow him? Matthew 5, 40, 43 to 46. Have you not heard that it was said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy? But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the righteous and on the unrighteous, and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Even the tax collectors do the same. Okay, so now this is definitely hard for us. God has high expectations that we treat others the same way we ourselves wish to be treated. With kindness, dignity, respect, not counting what we have or what we have not, regardless of race, color, gender, religion, culture. Jesus treated all with compassion and kindness. The Lord's Prayer, as, as recorded in, in Matthew 6, 9-11 reads, Pray this then, this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to a time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespass, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, your Father will not forgive your trespass. Now look Luke 11 verses 1 and 4 is slightly different. He was praying in a certain place and after he finished one of his disciples said to him, Lord teach us to pray as John the Baptist taught his disciples. He said to them, 
When you pray, say this, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. Friends, when we pray, we are spending time with God. He hears every word. It does not need to be long. We can pray short prayers, day, night, any time, any place. It can bring us comfort, support, and strength. Praying for others is a blessing to those we pray for as well as ourselves. I really highly recommend making this a daily practice. Jesus had so many lessons in the Bible that are just as relevant to us as they were to his followers. In Luke 18, 9 to 14, the parable directed at some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector was standing far off and would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Wisdom indeed, we cannot buy our way into heaven. God provides all we need. Advice from Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not store up for yourself treasure on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We come into the world a helpless baby, depending on those who love us. When we leave, when we leave it, our earthly treasures do not come along for the right. Mark 41, 1 to 9, the parable of the sower. This is an easy one to follow, the meaning. The sower cast the seed, some fell on, on the path, and the birds ate the seed, and some of the seed fell on the ground that was rocky, with not a lot of soil. It grew fast, but when the sun was up, the seed was scorched, and with no root withered and died. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. The other seed fell on good ground and brought forth grain and growing up and increasing and yielding 30, 60 and a hundredfold. Jesus then said, let anyone with ears listen. So the explanation was that the sower, the, the sower was the word of God. Some hear the word and they listen to the devil and forget these are the ones from the path. The ones on the rocky ground hear the word and receive it, but have no debt. They fall away. The ones sown amongst the thorns hear the word, but the lure of wealth and worldly cares take over. They lose the word, but the ones who hear the word and accept it, they bear fruit. They will have life and live it abundantly. We all have to choose for ourselves the path we will follow. The Bible is like our roadmap. As such, we truly have to read it to gain understanding. John 1, 5, this is the message that we have heard from him and proclaimed to him, to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness. 1 John 4, 9 to 12, God's love was revealed among us in this way, that God sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved, loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. 
In other words, when God is with us, who can be against us? Colossians 1, 10 and 11. And I pray this in order that I may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that I may have great endurance and patience and joyfully give thanks to the Father. How can we practice serving God? Do any of you remember the study done a fairly long time ago? Pastor Gary was still here at the time. The five faithful practices. The first one was radical hospitality, which was about creating an atmosphere of welcome and inclusion. The scripture, Matthew 25, 25, 36 and 40, a reminder that Jesus said, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. When you do it for one of the least of these, these you do it for me. The prayer, God teach me to be thankful for what you have given me and to use it joyfully to expand your mission in the world. Are you willing to search for ways that you can use your talent in this area? There is much need. Don't be overwhelmed. Prayers are always needed. The second was passionate worship, which encourages our personal investment in praising God. The scripture, Psalm 101 and 2, encourages us to be joyful as we sing our praise to, the, to God. The prayer, Lord, Fill me with joy for all you have done for me. Strengthen me in your love and mold me to be what you want me to be. Am I stirring any memories here? I hope so. I know we are all benefiting from the return of some of the things we have missed due to the restrictions. But now comes the third practice, intentional faith development. What looks for a deepened spiritual life, both private and corporate. The scripture from Acts 2.42 talks about the, the, the apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching and fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. The prayer, Lord, create a thirst in me for your word, for your presence, and for developing into the person you know I can be. I tell you, God knows what we can accomplish through him. But we might not ever know what we can do if we don't try. The fourth practice, risk-taking mission and service. This involves stepping outside the comfortable and familiar. The scripture, of course, was Micah telling us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The prayer Lord, keep me faithful to your service. Help me to do what you call me to do at this moment and to focus on what I know can be. That can be difficult at times and definitely a challenge. We have many demands on our time, but we are blessed when we make time to answer God's call to action. The last practice, extravagant generosity. This means given in new and expanded ways. The scripture from 1 Timothy 6, 18 and 19. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The prayer, Lord, help me to see others as you see them as my brothers and sisters, and care for them as I would care for you. Friends, we need this so badly today. There is so much anger, frustration, resentments, and division in our world. We need peace between the nations and a desire to come together to work for the good of all. I encourage you to pray that God in his time will cause people to turn away from the horrific violence that is prevalent today and causes so much needless pain and suffering in the world. 
And I would like to finish today by reading you a verse that's titled, Open My Eyes. It's a poem. Open my eyes, God, so I may see and feel your presence close to me. Give me your strength for my stumbling feet as I battle the crowd on life's busy street and widen the vision of my unseen eyes so in passing faces I'll recognize not just a stranger unloved or unknown but a friend with a heart that is much like my own. Give me perception to make me aware that scattered profusely on life's stuttered there are the best gifts of God that we daily pass by as we look at the world with an unseeing eye. At the very bottom of that, they had a little prayer that read, Gracious God, open my unseeing eyes, widen my vision, help me to see your best gifts in every person that passes by. Amen.